talked about it last time. Um, the big thing that screws up most businesses is just bad management. I mean, as, as somebody who, you know, went to business school in finance, I've read a thousand of these journals and, you know, essays about it. But the bottom line is whatever you're going into to do an analysis or business analysis, and I do this for professionally, um, you can pretty much before you walk in the door, you know, the problem is management. <laughs> I mean, it always is. I mean, it always starts at the top. So the I'm going to teach you guys a basic concept. There are basically a couple different types of leaders. Um, and the, the main three, uh, oh, hang on. Sorry, everybody, for the, the little blip there. We had a technical problem. So the three types of, generally, three types of leaders that we talk about in business. Um, I mean, there's lots of different types, but there's three main categories. One is laissez-faire, which means basically they don't really do anything. They're just kind of, you know, they just kind of hang out. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. You know, they just sort of expect their employees to handle it. So a great example, this is like uh, if you go to a convenience store, a lot of times the owners, they'll go in, they'll check the books. But other than that, they expect the clerks to just take care of everything. Right? Do you agree or am I? Yeah. Okay. So uh, that would be one. Uh, you typically, I mean, depending on the business, you don't generally want to do that. Right? Um, the other type is a transactional leader. Okay, and a transactional leader would be somebody who is more autocratic in the way they do things. They're very, you know, micromanaging or whatnot, but they want to get certain jobs done. Now, that works well for short term or contract employees, right? Because the idea is, is there's always a carrot and a stick. I'll give you the money to do the job, but if you screw it up and I'll fire you, sue you, whatever, right? So there's always a, a risk, you know, there's always a reward and punishment kind of thing on the table. Um, and that's how you get your employees to do things. But, you know, it doesn't really inspire your employees to go above and beyond <laughs> if that's all there is. They just want to meet the goal and get it done. And that's okay in the short run for the most part. Um, in the long run, you typically what you're talking about is what we like to call transformational leadership. Now, transformational leadership are people that they generally try to develop a vision and they try to inspire their employees, right, or their workers to to co-opt into the vision and build it and create it right but part of that is is you got to really pay attention to your employees you have to pay them well you have to make sure their needs are met you know if your employee comes to you and says hey i have such and such problem i gotta go you can't be a punk about it you gotta be like all right that's fine <laughs> right so you have to pay attention to their personal needs get them involved and make them feel like they're contributing and then you got to let them sometimes take the wheel right <clears throat> but that's how you get better results in general right and i can just tell you as in general sometimes you just let the other person take it and then a minute later you realize oh they had a better idea than i did aren't i glad i did this <laughs> right it happens uh, you can't be right all the time <laughs> Um, so just, this is just sort of a kind of little characteristics that in business school, when they teach you this, just general characteristics, I took this from Cavendish Wood. Um, so they generally tend to ins inspirational motivation. They're trying to inspire you towards the goal. We're creating this or that, uh, they want to make you feel a part of the business and part of making them feel a part of the business is making sure that the success of the business, you know, kind of trickles down to them, right? Some of the gravy spills onto their potatoes, you know what I'm saying? Um, individualist, individual consideration. Once again, you got to think about their lives because their, you know, their relationships and their personal lives are more important than their jobs. And you have to realize that. Uh, idealized influence, just, that's just, you just inf influence them by your passion for what you're doing, right? Uh, intellectual stimulation, you know, make sure that they're contributing, they feel like they're contributing and they have the ability to contribute, you know, and then just little things like uh, characteristics of things, self-management, uh, not being too egotistical, um, you know, appropriate risk taking, you don't want to take too much risk because you're going to make people uncomfortable. Um, decision making, blah, 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 Ad adaptability is a big one, being able to change with the circumstance. So those are typically good things 
if you're a manager or you're running a business, those are good qualities. Generally, you want to, you kind of want to focus on because you, you generally get better results over the long run, right? Most people tend to be more transactional. It's the, uh, you're fired if you don't do it <laughs> kind of, kind of mentality, right? Or I'm a, I'm a punk, you know, about, uh, if you don't do what I say, you're going to get canned or, uh, you know, I'm going to pay you less or whatever, you know, the Dave Ramsey method of <laughs> business management, which is probably why he has fairly high turnover and he gets sued by everybody. Right. <laughs>